asked me to take the team. My first game that I took over was Lincoln away. And uh, Lincoln, I think, were top of the league. We were struggling. John Kirk was with me. You know, John was a legend at Bournemouth. Great man, kit man, trainer, been everything. And me and John slap up to Lincoln for the game. Every game in the country was being called off that day. Every pitch was frozen solid. It was absolutely bitter, minus five, six, seven degrees everywhere. And Lincoln was absolutely bitterly cold and the pitch was like concrete, like a skating rink. And anyway, the, the, it was the only game, well, one of the only games that was on that survived the weather that day. It should never have been played. It was an incredible pitch. And we only had long nylon studs. We were struggling. The club was really poor. And they come running out in them little pimpled boots. And I'm watching my players come out. I've only took over on the Friday. Dave had a fallout with the chairman on Friday. And they, my players were coming out, slipping as they were running onto the pitch. And the Lincoln players were like ballet dancers, just gliding over the pitch. Well, we were nine nil down with half hour to go. And I'm thinking this could be 15, 16, 17. This could be a world record. And we got a corner. I don't know how we managed to get a corner. And John, Captain Kirk, as he was captain's going to our centre half, get up, get up. I'm going, get back, get back. I said, we're not going to win. We're not going to win 10 9. You know what I mean? Gonna... So we hung on in the last half hour to not concede any more goals somehow. Harry, with the with the um, at the end of that season, you had a right clear out of that squad. I remember, and you brought in eight or nine players, a lot of whom we'd never heard of, that that then went on to win the league. Were they all players you had in mind? Had you designed that squad in your head? Um, well, you know, you it was there was last minute. You know, we played pre season. We never won a game. Cole Richards came from Enfield, who I went to watch on Bank Holiday Monday playing for the England non league team against Wales. It was a beautiful sunny day, and so I'm going, I'm going to Nanny and Barra today to watch England. She said, "What, you, Harry? What you got to go to football on a Monday for?" You know, I said, "I'm going to watch this game." So, I'll, you know, anyway, I slap all the way there. I watched the game. Cole Richards plays. Stuart Morgan recommended him to me. He was my chief scout. Stuart was brilliant. Knew the non-league inside out. He'd managed Weymouth when they had great teams. Graham Roberts, Tony Agana. Uh, Andy Townsend, all them players. He bought all them. Uh, anyway, he said to me, Harry, he's a good player. And I went down and I loved him. Big number, big front man, six foot three, powerful, looked like Cole Lewis, the sprinter. Anyway, after the game, I'm waiting by. They used to come in and have a um, a, a, a drink and a, some sandwiches and a cup of, you know, a cup of tea and a bit of cake or whatever. And they'd have little presentations. England played Wales. Anyway, I'm hiding behind this old wooden shed at Nuneaton Borough, waiting for Cole Richards. I'm going to tap him up, you know, tell him he should come to Bournemouth. And I'm waiting there, and, he, and then the players are coming in. I'm stood right. It was like I'm hiding behind. Suddenly, here he, Cole, Cole, I call him over. He looked at me. I can see him there, six foot three, big, big, handsome boy he was. He went, what do you want? I said, I want to talk to you, Cole. He said, what about? I said... <laughs> Harry, my name's Harry Redknapp. I'm manager of Bournemouth. He come walking over. He had to walk. He had to walk on. He had to, he had a walk on him. You know, bowling over. I said, "Come on, manager of Bournemouth. Uh, I'd like this. Would you be interested in coming to Bournemouth?" He said, "What league are you playing?" I said, "We're in the uh, uh, Division Three. He went, "Yeah, but what league, Ishmin?" I went, "No, football league." Because I've never heard of them, Bournemouth. I went, yeah, yeah, we're in the league. He said, what, you're full-time professional? I said, yeah. He said, that's what I want to be. I said, well, we, well, we want you to be one. He went, right. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah, I'm interested. I said, OK, great. Anyway, I'll ring his man manager, Eddie McCluskey. So I'm, Eddie, would you sell him? Blah, blah, Yeah, Harry, I would want 10 grand for him. OK, great. I come down and go to meet Eddie. Cole's, when I go to meet Eddie, Cole's sitting there with another boy who plays Renfield. So we're sitting there, they're mates, they're chatting away, and I'm going to see Eddie. He wants to see Cole first or whatever. Cole goes in to talk to Eddie McCluskey, the manager. I'm at Enfield now. I'm talking to his mate. His mate said to me, you're signing the wrong player, Harry. I went, why? What do you mean? He said, I'm 10 times better than him. I went, here? He said, yeah. He said, I'm better than he is. He said, I'll play with him up front for Enfield. He said, I've, I've got 28 goals or whatever. He's only got 15. He said, I'm miles better than him. Take me. I went, well, I'll have a look at you, but anyway, I'll go in. I sign Cole. He comes in. 
we play five pre-season games. We get beat everywhere. We've got Weymouth, get beat. Go to Yo or Bath, get beat. Cole is so bad. I've never seen anyone so useless in my life, right? I call him in. I said, you're going to wake up or what? He said, wait, wait till the real game start, Harry. I said, the real games? You've never played in a real game. What would you know? <laughs> anyway, he comes to me, says this to me, uh, my mate wants a trial. I said, oh, does he? I said, what position does he play, Carl? He said, he's a striker, same as me. I said, is he as good as you, Carl? He said, no, nah, he's not as good as me. I said, in that case, tell him not to bother. <laughs> and he went, oh. Anyway, off he goes. We, last pre-season game, we got a Crystal Palace. He said, my mate's playing for them today, the one you wouldn't give a trial to. Oh, is he? I said, well, we won't have to worry about him then, Carl, will we? Anyway, <laughs> when I... When it, after he, he run rings around us for about eight, 90 minutes, I realised Ian Wright was better than him. <laughs> so uh, that was that was Cole. But as it turned out, Cole, Cole Lewis, uh, Cole Richard, sorry, became a fantastic player for me. Uh, Mark Newsom was at Maidstone. And uh, again, tri tri uh, Stuart Morgan came to me and said, uh, Harry, there's a boy at Maidstone. He's fantastic, Mark Newsom, best, best player in non-league. I said, really? He said, yeah, different class. We've got, we've got to get him. Anyway, I said, all right. Anyway, a week later, Stuart said, oh, I can't believe our luck. I said, what's happened? He said, he's gone to Tottenham for a week. If Tottenham had took him. If Tottenham's in the Tottenham or Tottenham. I went, really? You're kidding? He said, yeah, he's gone there. They took him for a week. Anyway, on the Tuesday, they had a reserve game, Tottenham. Stuart said, I'm going to the game at their training ground. He rang me after the game. He said, he was the best player on the pitch. Oh, he said Tottenham are taking for sure. Oh no. Anyway, what can we do? Nothing. I'll get a phone call that night from somebody at Maidstone where he played, a secretary, who said to me, Harry, I know you've been after Mark Newson, haven't you? I said, Yeah, it looks like he's going to Tottenham, doesn't it? He said, Well, he's not on a contract. He's a non he's not he hasn't got a contract. He's a non contract player. He said, He's he's not registered. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he don't belong to any, he don't belong to us. He belongs to us, but he's not, he said, and this, between this time of year and this time of year, he's a free agent. I said, you you sure? He said, well, I'm the secretary, of course I'm sure. Anyway, with that, I ring Mark, he said, here's his number, if you want to ring him, get him down. So I ring him up, Mark Newson, Tuesday night. I said, Mark, he said, well, I played today with Spurs Reserves, Aaron. I think I've done well. He said, I think they might be interested in signing me. I said, Come down and meet me. He said, what? Well, oops. Sorry. He said, well, oh, my dogs are barking at someone. He said, well, I've got a day off tomorrow. I said, well, jump on a train. I'll pick you up at the station. Come down. Now, please, just have a chat with me. You've got nothing to lose. You're not trained at Tottenham tomorrow. You go back to Tottenham Thursday and train if you want. Sorry, lads. So he said, uh, all right, OK, I'll come down. So he comes down. I'll meet him, pick him up. We take him to the Looper's restaurant, me and Brian Tyler. Sit down, have a bit of pasta with my make him an offer. I said, oh, come here, I want to make, I'll make you captain. He went, whoa, you know, let me go and see what Tottenham have got. So I said, no, we can't. You, if you go back to Tottenham, I said, I've got to do it today, you know, and we want you to come. It, it's, he, he never had a job. He was out of work, struggling, just getting a few quid off the Maidstone. He said, all right. Anyway, you know, I said, you're not going back on the train till you sign. We, eight o'clock that night, he signs. We get it done. I rung Mr. Young at registrations in the meantime. Is there a Mark Newsom registered with Maystone? No. I said, what does that mean, Mr. Young? He said, that means he's not registered. He said, he can sign for anybody. He's not, he's not got under contract. Okay, great. So we sign him. I ring, I ring Barry Fry. Barry, uh, it's Harry Redknapp. Hello, H, how are you going, son? He said to me. He went, how are you? I went, yeah, lovely, Barry. I said, I've just signed Mark Newsom. Oh, you want to sign Mark? He said, nah, Harry. Got... He said, he's got a Tottenham, mate. 200 grand plus 100 grand after games, another 100 grand after more games. He said he played in their reserves. He said, different class. I went, no, I've signed him. He went, what do you mean? You're so what are you talking about? I said, I've signed him. He said, how can you sign him? You ain't, we haven't agreed to fee. How can you sign him? He's got a Tottenham. I said, no, he's, he's now a Bournemouth player. I said, we sent the contract in. He's Mr. Young with registrations. He's, he's a Bournemouth player. You what, Redknapp, he said to me, I'll tell you what. He said, you've had it. I'm going to send two blokes down there, shoot your bleak kneecaps off. He called me everything. I went, Barry, you should have had him on a contract, mate. Unlucky, put the phone down. <laughs> two, two minutes, ten minutes later, the chairman rings me. Jim Thompson, I think his name was. He was the chairman of the league as well. Harry, he said, I must apologise. 
I do apologise for the way Barry spoke to you. We don't talk like that. We don't do things like that, Maidstone. He said, I said, no, no problem, Mr. Thompson. I said, I understand. It's, you know. He said, look, we've, we've made a mistake. We've made a mistake, okay? And you found out, he said, and we've been caught out. Uh, but let's be gentlemen. Let's come to an agreement on the fee. We've been offered two hundred thousand pounds from Tottenham plus add-ons. Where do you stand? I said we don't stand anywhere, Mr. Thompson. We've signed him. He belongs to Bournemouth. He's not. There is no fee. He's not on contract. He went. You. He called me everything. Right. <laughs> went, Sorry, Mr. Thompson. You should. Have, I'll put the phone down. Next day, I'm in the office with Brian Tyler, Secretary Harry. There's a Big bloke here. There's three people: the chairman, the manager, and some big bloke uh, from from Maidstone. <laughs> oh no! Me and Brian crep out across the pitch. We said, "Get our cars, bring our cars around the other side." We left our keys with. Don't tell them. Tell them we're not here. We left the keys. Went round, walked across the pitch, out the other, opened the far gate, the groundsman. The cars got round. We shot off and drove off. <laughs> he played this for what? I made him captain. We won the league that year. Uh, and I sold him for 200 or whatever thousand pound to Fulham. Yeah. I think he went to from. Oh, I love my time at Bournemouth. So it was an incredible part of my life. And, you know, training in the park, getting thrown off by the park keeper. Tommy Effenden, who was part of that promotion team, Tommy was a great player. Tommy letting the park keeper's tyres down. And I'm saying, Tommy, <laughs> this ain't helping the cause, mate. You know what I mean? And the park keeper, you know booting the spokes of his bike or saying Tommy would and uh, next day he'd throw us off again and to think that you know and I thought winning the league is no one's ever going to beat that and then Eddie came along and just completely blew us out of the water then he what they what they've achieved since then it's been amazing okay, Harry, got... we know, sorry Harry we know you've got to go at nine um would you come no, back on. on to do it to, or can you can you put get Sandra to put the dinner in the oven for a bit how long we got Sam saying Sandro, how long we got? I love this. Absolutely. Suppose I go do, have me dinner and go back on with the boys. Yeah, I can have me dinner, I'll come back in 15 minutes with you. Is that all right, lads? No problem at yeah. all. We can keep talking. No worries at all. Yeah? Yeah, you stuff. do that. Appreciate yeah, that. Otherwise, I'll have See you in a minute. Okay. Lovely. Cheers, Harry. So, so the big question is, Neil, how many questions had you written down that you haven't had a chance to answer tonight? <laughs> This piece of paper, it's gone. <laughs> I think uh, I think I've seen I've seen Harry do after dinner speaking, and I think the um, I think basically you need two questions that you one to start one to start him off, and one halfway through to get him to change the tack. Yeah. But the uh, but the uh, is I mean his book's brilliant as well. If you read his uh, his autobiography, it's uh, I think he's got a couple of books that he's he's that are out. That he's just uh, I mean the game is an entertainment industry; it needs stories and. Uh, Harry Redknapp is just a master storyteller and he's always been involved in things that create stories. So it's great. Just great to have him on the show, isn't it? Mm. So I, I don't know how long it's been. Uh, D Neil, did you want to perhaps give them, uh, you know, I know we don't want to be pressuring them to. I just, te I just texted him to say, hope you can come back and join us. So I haven't had a reply yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll leave it for what we'll, we'll do 90 minutes and hopefully He'll be coming back soon. Uh, this is a bit, this reminds me of like VAR, Neil, and I know you absolutely detest VAR, but <laughs> like we're all, like we're all here waiting. There's like 100, 153 people here just thinking, what's going to happen? Is he going to come back or what? It reminds me of, uh, do you remember when you were a kid and the ITV News used to go down and they used to have to, they used to, have to talk through and uh, this was in the days before rolling news when people became very adept at talking through. And uh, so you, you would have these strange sort of like banal conversations going on. They were waiting for the VT footage to come back. I think it was about 2002, yeah. 2003, but it might be earlier. But it doesn't affect my enjoyment of the game. I just watch, I just watch the game as per normal and that's fine. And we've got hey. Harry back. How was your dinner, Harry? Very good. Yes. We had a bit of fish. We've got a fish guy who comes down from Cornwall somewhere and he uh, delivers, you know, he's struggling, I think, and he comes down and delivers fish fish around this area. It's been, it's been really good, yeah. The big question, Harry, did you have jam roly-poly for pudding? No, I haven't had one for years. I don't even know where I dug that one up from, really. <laughs> Well, that was, I mean, as I say, I went there when they were, they, I got the job because they were, they were obviously, they had a terrible start to the season. One day Ramos uh, was the manager and 
So I took over a good team. Listen, you know, people say, oh, you kept us up and that. But listen, my wife could have kept them up. I mean, it was like, you know, I took over a team really that for whatever reason was stuck at the bottom of the league. Only had two points after eight matches. There was Modric and Bow and all these fantastic players there. So it wasn't very difficult to keep them up, that's for sure. And um, I think we finished seventh in the end that year um, mm. after that bad start. And then, obviously, the following year, we, um, we 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 finished fourth. We won at Man City last game, last one game of the season to uh, to qualify for the uh, for the Champions League. And um, and then the, the following year, the year I lost the year I lost my job, we we finished fourth again. But Chelsea, as you say, won the uh, won the Champions League that year. I, the worst thing I ever done. I went to that game. Uh, Jamie persuaded me to go with him and Graham Souness. Uh, with a local guy who had his own plane from Bournemouth, who's a big football fan. We went, he, so we flew over them two. They were working for Sky, Jamie and Scram. And I was in the Sky box watching the game. And uh, when Chelsea won, we, they, after the game, we had to walk around. They kept the Chelsea fans in. So we had to walk past the Chelsea fans, thousands of them. They, in unison, they sung to me um, <laughs> Thursday night, Channel 5. <laughs> well, Benty, I mean, no, we played Portsmouth at home not, uh, when I first went to Tottenham and uh, in the last minute of the game, Darren Bent, the ball came over. Benty had an open goal. He only had to head it in the goal. The goal kick was out of position. It, it was impossible to miss it, really. And he missed it, you know, and I got interviewed after the game. And like I do, they said, Harry, you know, you should have won the game the last minute. Darren Bent had a great chance. And I said, yeah, my missus would have scored that. You know, I mean, but I'm only saying what three million other blokes sitting there on a Monday <laughs> night watching the match on telly gone, bleed nil, darling, you'd have scored that. I mean, it was, you know, but Bentley got the ump over it. And uh, But the funny thing was I, uh, I ended up going to, uh, to Derby for a little spell and I walked my... Mel Morris, who, who owns Derby, he's got a house about 200 yards from me. And he said, Harry, would you come for the last two months of the season? I've just given the job to the young manager, Darren Wassell, as a, t as a caretaker. Would you come in and just be around him a couple of days a week? And just, I said, yeah, sure, OK, great. So I drive up to Derby. I'm walking out on the pitch, watch training first down there. I've got a big coat and it's cold. I'm with Kevin Phillips. And I'm walking. I said, how you been going, Kev? It must have been the problem. You've been struggling a bit. He said, yeah. He said, we can't score goals. You know, he said, uh, Darren Bent's not scoring. I said, Darren Bent? I forgot he was there because he had to me. Up. He, went, he went to the chairman and his agent rung up the chairman and slagged me off. And I let him go about a month later. You know, we fell out big time. And he said, yeah, Darren Bent's not scoring. I went, oh, my God, no. Not Darren Bent. I forgot he was there. I walked out on the training pitch. I swear, I'm not stood there a minute. And the ball came over. And Bent, he was 25 yards out at an angle. And he's hit his volley. I've never seen a shot like it. It went right in the top corner like a rocket. I shouted out, hey, Bentley. I said, my old woman couldn't have scored that one. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, superb. Well, we're nearing the end. We've had a, a couple of questions that we just uh, like you to uh, answer, if possible. One of them um, from a certain Mr. Mark Pugh, Harry, who's asked whether you've dabbled in any cooking during lockdown at all. Who's it from? From Mark Pugh. Mark Pugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. What so, what, yeah, go on. Huey from Bournemouth. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What a good player. What a good player. Yeah. What a good player he is. Yeah. I love watching him play. I used to, he was real quality. He'd check, make out the cross, he'd check back. I thought he was, again, been around, you know, suddenly planning the Premier League and giving <clears throat> Premier League defences all kinds of problems. <clears throat> Fantastic player. So, Harry, um, not meaning to like, keep on at you, but um, he did ask a question that you've well avoided there about whether you've dabbled in any cooking during the lockdown. No, I've got, no, I've got to be honest, I couldn't cook an egg. I, I, <laughs> I did a bit of toast the other day. But, yeah. um, it got stuck in the toaster and the toaster nearly caught on fire. 
I, I, I cut it too thick and I, it wouldn't pop up and it started to burn. <laughs> so smoke, so Sandra's not, well, I did it on purpose really. She won't let me back in the kitchen now. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, Harry, I've got to say, thank you so much for your time tonight. It's been a blast. It's been amazing. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you so yeah. much. Uh, yeah, Jeff, do you want to say any words? Well, Harry, I, I think you, it's fantastic stories. Loved having you on. Uh, we'd love to get you back again at some point in the future when you're perhaps a bit less busy. So, uh, you know, let's uh, let's keep that dialogue going and we'll we'll get you back at some point in the future if you're up for that. I'm trying to win the lottery and I can buy the club off a of max. That's the, that's the move. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Neil Dawson as well. Thank you so much. No, thank you. I think it's just been fantastic listening to Harry. I mean... I was thinking earlier on, we've had three great eras since the 50s and Harry's been a player in one of them. He's managed the other one and he's been a fan in the last one. And he's just a major oh, part a of our club. Yeah. Yeah. Love watching him. It's great. Great to have him on. Yeah. Well done, thank you. Yeah. Thank Cheers. you so much, Harry. Yeah. We Bye. will see you very soon. And yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to have Harry on and to have all your comments as well that's come through as well. Uh, remember, if you want some giggles, you can re-watch this on YouTube and Facebook at any time you like. But for now, this has been Back of the Net, the AFC Bournemouth podcast. We'll see you in the next video. Have a good night. Cheers. Yeah.